our panel is about to finish in one minute, so, oh, we will move it, okay. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you, Stiepo, for uh, uh, organizing this uh, very, very uh, beautiful and, uh, and uh, useful event, and uh, for inviting me to uh, say a few words on, uh, on the topic. I listened to Mr. Kast last night, I listened to a uh, couple of colleagues, and these uh, couple of hours, last night and, and this morning, uh, I heard so many plausible things that I feel like you know, I'm at home with my family. Actually, I, I, even better that I'm on vacation, drinking a cocktail, and vacation has been paid by somebody else. So um, I wish that uh, more people had an opportunity to listen to these things, because usually those who are on the other side are not that, uh, do not really have the patience uh, to listen, and do not have the patience to read. Um, my predecessors have pointed out at least 10 or 15 authors um, who are relevant with regards to this, uh, uh, to this topic. I'm also very grateful to, to, to Stiepo, who once he joined politics or started his uh, career in politics, um, uh, he continued to discuss things with me. And, and, and uh, not only that we discuss things, he actually accepts uh, uh, most of my uh, advices, uh, which I think is, is good for you. And, uh, and one of those was uh, start reading Thomas Sowell. I think Thomas Sowell is a collection of all of this, beautiful collection of all of this. Unfortunately, we do not have translation in English, in, in Croatian, but we have uh, enough people in Croatia who uh, understand English uh, at a sufficient level to be able to read Thomas Sowell. In addition to this, uh, Stiepa quoted Thomas Sowell last night. And I believe that this quote came from a, a booklet which I made and shared with him. It is a booklet which I made for myself. It has something like 200 quotes from Thomas Sowell, something like 200 quotes from Milton Friedman, 50 quotes from Hayek. And it keeps falling apart, obviously, because I keep browsing through this all the time. And uh, you would readily find such a great amount of wisdom being written in a, such a concise uh, 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 document. And I shared this with, uh, with everybody who is actually interested to receive and, 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 and read this. And I think a conservative should read this once a month, just in order not to forget uh, uh, these things. Um, so what's economics? Well, there are many definitions of economics, but one which is short and concise, which I like, is economics is a study or a discipline that uh, monitors and analyzes cause and effect relationships in an economy. In particular, what it does is it looks at the consequences of alternative uses of different resources which are scarce. Okay? And based on these consequences which are empirical facts, we have come to know or become aware of certain economic laws. And we cannot ignore these laws. Or we can ignore these laws, but as Thomas Sowell said, we cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring these laws. And there are many, many people who actually exactly do this, ignoring these, uh, ignoring these facts. And he says that one of these laws, and in his opinion, probably the first law of economics, is the scarcity. There is never enough of everything in terms of products and services to fulfill the demand of everybody's desires. And we have to accept this as a fact. But then you have people on the left who says, well, we will disregard this law because we are politicians. And that's the first mistake they, uh, they make. Most of them do not understand the laws of economics. Some of them do, but they're just acting in a very opportunistic, uh, a very opportunistic way. Well, my experience in the last three years, I will not go back. Well, let's go back eight or nine years. Back in 2015, after being in recession for six years, after having lost 200,000 jobs in private sector, and we are a very small country, at that time we believed that we had something like four and a half million people. Okay. Um, 
where the government spending grew to almost 52 or 3% of, uh, of GDP, where the government employment grew by additional 20,000 uh, individuals, which means that the public sector and the government didn't do actually anything to help the economy recover. This is why we actually uh, remained for six years in recession. I wrote an article in one of the widely read, at least in business circles, uh, newspaper saying that I think that Croatia needs Thatcherism. Well, that was a total uh, heresy, so to say. Okay, and I got called by a chief editor saying, what the nonsense you are talking about? And I told him, look, this uh, uh, rubrica or uh, this part of the newspapers is called uh, Opinion Maker. You either change the name of, the, of this thing or you'll you leave me alone if you want me to continue to actually um, write something for you occasionally. Um, two years ago, I was in the national radio with a, a guy from a national bank <clears throat> pointing out that the amount of printed money in circulation has increased dramatically prior to Corona and then exponentially during Corona. And then this will eventually lead to inflation. And he was nodding like this. Okay, he was not seen on the TV, but uh, uh, he was doing uh, like this. In December 2021, I was in the panel with a governor of Croatian National Bank, Mr. Vujicic, and I told him that I think that inflation is a real threat. And he said that he doesn't see inflation as a threat because of the strong competition among private businesses. And I told him if this was the truth, we would never have inflation in history because there was always some competition, at least in non-socialist countries. And we have observed uh, eras of strong and high inflation in the United States, which had a reasonable amount of uh, free private enterprise and, and competition. Um, the reason why I'm um, uh, saying this is, then we had the um, price limits on oil and gas and some um, other limitations being imposed on us um, during Corona time. But if you look at the money printing, it's action sponsored by the government. If you look at all the restrictions during Corona time and all the actions done by the government, including the action called that government pays the salary, which is the euphemism for using taxpayers' money to actually uh, give it to somebody else who doesn't perform any work, any productive work. And then the war in Ukraine and all the problems that come from this, which of these actually have to do anything with the free market and free enterprise system? None. And very often, a person or a group or an organization or a system to be blamed is exactly a free enterprise system that actually never contributed anything to these uh, problems. It's all problems and consequences of government uh, intervention and action. Robin mentioned the knowledge problem introduced by Hayek. Whatever an individual in the government does today in order to help or change course of action, nobody, absolutely nobody, is that clever, educated, read, or whatever, experienced that it can enumerate all the repercussions and consequences that will appear eventually. All the audiences and individuals or organizations or businesses who will be affected by this, the timing when this is going to happen and the magnitude of these repercussions. And it seems like we will now have another Minister of Economy being fired because of the consequences of the actions he promoted some six months ago and which were clearly aligned with the prime minister, who is most likely going to fire him uh, now, because he calculated it wrong. He didn't predict all the repercussions, despite the fact that he is a university professor. Oh. Well, usually those have the greatest amount of courage to ignore these facts, because they're university professors. Um, there are many definitions of economic freedom. The one which I like the most is introduced or has been introduced by Mike Milton Friedman. The economic freedom is 
a set of circumstances where an individual or a family, if you will, has a full freedom to decide how much money that they earned will they spend on themselves and for which purpose? How will they invest and save if there is anything excess uh, left over? And to whom and under which con uh, conditions or terms will they actually give their money to? And then if you uh, take this uh, definition of uh, economic freedom and you start thinking about what governments do, then you will see that there is a lot of intrusion into this economic, uh, uh, economic freedom. Um, Robin was mentioning liberals, and there are three natural laws introduced by liberals, life, liberty, property. And I think that these three natural laws, life, liberty, property, uh, we should just be reminded that the idea behind them being called natural laws is because they should not or could not be reduced to any individual or taken away by, to any, from any individual by, within the, any de democratic process, so to say. So life, liberty, property should not be taken away from you just because six people said they're in favor of this and four people said they're against it. This is the logic of a natural law that each individual, or we believe each individual, um, uh, has. Liberals say that traditional liberals, real liberals, um, say that um, you should be able to consume these rights as long as uh, you do not restrict the usage of these same rights by other people and as long as you do not inflict any damage upon other people. So let's assume I have a private factory and I manufacture something and I have a waste which I dispose on my neighbor's uh, um, um, whatever, in front of his garage. That's a clearly imposing a, a damage to uh, somebody else. Um, the third thing that I would add from the perspective of a conservative is that you should be able to do all of these things, as liberals says, say, as long as they are in line with what we believe are permanent moral truths. And when you talk to a libertarian, there are no permanent moral truths. When you talk to a conservative, there are moral truths. We may not agree on each and every of them, to the last word, but we believe there are moral, uh, uh, moral truths. And this is that actually makes uh, one of the distinctions between um, conservative view of the economy and libertarian view of, uh, uh, of the economy. So if you ask me whether, uh, I was asked by a journalist last night, he said, I will ask you a provocative question. Would you approve of LGBT and all the other letters that go, um, now they keep adding at letters. I can't keep the track of all the letters now. Uh, club in downtown Zagreb. So I was asking, do you mean whether I would arbitrarily um, uh, preclude them from opening uh, the club? He said yes. Well, I would say no. But unlike libertarian who will say they don't care, I will say I do care, and I think it's right. It's the wrong thing to do. So I think that um, very often some people think that um, the ideas that we share, at least economic ideas that we share, that we necessarily insist on gaining arbitrary power for implementing these ideas. The truth is completely opposite. I think that the huge amount of arbitrary power, as written in all these books, has a proven track record of being totally misused. It is a very, very thin line between what you and I do not like and our passion to actually ask for a government to forbid uh, uh, something. So I think this is um, something that has to be repeated uh, publicly, that one of the biggest threats to a free market economy is the growing amount of arbitrary power being concentrated within the hands of politicians. Statistical data is telling us that I think something like 10 countries in EU already have government spending in excess of 50% of GDP. And we are 
still being told that we live in a free market economy and capitalism. The second challenge that I see is that people are mixing up and confusing free market enterprise system with crony capitalism. That's a totally different thing. And I'm not blaming a capitalist or entrepreneur who wants protection. As Friedman says, most of us produce one good or service or group of services or products. And we live from selling these things. And we would like that everything we procure from our suppliers is exposed to the greatest amount of competition because we know inherently that this is probably the setup where, within which we will get the best deal for ourselves. But somehow we have a passion or urge to protect our product. And this is, this is why then we misuse or influence arbitrary power in hands of Steep of Stiep or somebody else. Yes. Not yet. And ask him to give us subsidies, to give us lower tax rates, to impose regulation that limits entrance of competition, so on and, uh, uh, and so forth. So the, yeah. So the huge amount of arbitrary, growing amount of arbitrary power, um, is, is exactly the thing that makes things worse, not better. Although we, kept being told that this is the mechanism and a way to solve uh, the problems. There is no government action, very little, that does not consume taxpayers' money. Almost none. Almost none. And as Friedman said 60 years ago, he mentioned and explained the Iron Triangle. You have a politician who is in the media. You have a person that works in some sort of government agency that gets salary, and you have a private enterprise that gets the benefits out of, uh, out of this. The third thing which is totally misleading is the economy is being presented to us as a national collective sport. That's totally wrong. We can have collective, national, aggregate economic accounts, but the economy is a very individual sport. Each individual in this room will act in a short and especially mid-term or long run in accordance with their own particular economic uh, um, um, interests. So this is why when somebody says that something is good for the economy, maybe in total, yes, but maybe it's a zero-sum game. Maybe something has been taken from somebody and given to somebody else by using arbitrary, uh, arbitrary power. And I know that um, I'm not the, the only speaker here, so I will quote Thomas Sowell, one of those 250 quotes uh, for this first introductory part. And he says the following, the most fundamental fact about the ideas of the political left is they do not work. Therefore, we should not be surprised to find the left concentrated in institutions where ideas do not have to work in order to survive. And we can see this with our mayor in Zagreb, who has been in NGOs for most of his life. And sometimes I tend to believe that, I'm not saying that he has any bad intentions. Most socialists have very good intentions, but disastrous results because the processors are not proper. That um, once that he has a real job, I must say that in the last two years, I. Would not, I'm not out of opinion that things are better than they were in Zagreb. To the contrary, I wish that he would just cut the grass for the start. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.